Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to the second edition of our virtual Caffeine and Gasoline. And I'm Richard. Everybody and knows that. <laughs> All right, well, welcome back. If this is your first time joining us for a virtual Caffeine and Gasoline, we have a very special treat for you. Uh, this one is going to be all user submitted content, so we got an enormous amount of submissions from you all. Uh, we've got some giveaways and some winners for some categories that we made up arbitrarily. So um, we are excited to share those with everybody who's watching. Uh, but first and foremost, just to reiterate, we hope that everybody is happy, healthy, staying safe, abiding by their uh, local guidelines as we work our way through. Um, I think we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, here at Griot's Garage, we are still open for business. We want to reiterate that if you are local to Tacoma, our store is open, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, Monday through Saturday, on a will call basis only. Um, just uh, so you can come and pick up your products. It's a pretty miserable day here today, so you might not be washing your car. But hopefully, we have people from all over the country that may have a nice Saturday to go work on their cars. They can wash their cars indoors. Yeah. Rinse this wash and wax. Yeah. Spray on car wash. Whatever you want. Um, so again, we, we hope everybody is happy and healthy. Um, and we are here to take your mind off of everything going on in the world. And I think we should just get going by talking about some cars. How about that? Baby. All right. So our first car is a 2008 BMW E82 135i that was submitted by Thomas at 135 by 3. It is Montego Blue MHD tuned and local to the Pacific Northwest. Montego, where is Montego? I am not certain, but uh, I think it's an island, right? It's a handsome color. It's a very nice shot. Uh, 135 by three, I, I know he's, uh, I think a friend of one of our previous Rio's Motors employees and a very clean uh, 135. So, you know, they took a three series, lopped eight and a half inches out of it, and kind of re, uh, did the 2002, yeah, which I think is kind of cool. And I know that you can get massive power out of these motors. In fact, Forrest, our foreman at Griot's Garage, made his own custom downpipe and has this crazy tuning system where he plays with all the buttons on his steering wheel, and all of a sudden he's you know, breaking laws and uh, <laughs> well, he, a lot of noise. Yeah, well, they made a twin turbo uh, inline six of this. Yeah, so that was 300 horsepower. Yeah, if you go on the BMW forums, there's all sorts of banter about the N54 and guys talking crap about it, but I think you can put quite a bit of power out of that thing. Yeah. I like them. So uh, you are our first uh, participant, Thomas, and uh, we thank you for your submission. So you get the keys to the uh, kingdom. Yeah, I guess we're giving you keys to our building, but no, yeah. at the very least, um, we're going to get back in contact with you. You're going to win a caffeine and gasoline shirt for your participation. In the future, if you're submitting and we feature your car, uh, we're going to give you the chance to participate in categories. Again, we'll make them up on the fly. If you really touch us with a story um, or great photos, just some, some intergenerational aspect of the car, you're going to have a better chance. So for the next Caffeine and Gasoline, we're going to put up a slide right now. What we want from you in order to submit uh, and participate more effectively. We got a great amount of submissions, a whole variety of information. Some of you need to improve your cell phone photography skills, but uh, we're asking you to give us as much information as possible to make it as easy as possible to participate. Um, check all the boxes with regards to those questions. We'll keep posting that up throughout the show. But submit via uh, Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag virtualCNG. Or email us directly at social at griotsgarage.com. You're probably going to get a very polite email back from Stevie or myself um, thanking you for your submission. But the more photos, the better, so we can feature some of those stories as they get going. So again, Thomas, you're going to get a, a CNG shirt. So hit us back up, and we'll get your size and get it mailed to you. Uh, the, the shirts are made by one of our friends locally, Group 6. They're great designers, a very nice quality shirt, and obviously, it's our logo. Pretty cool logo. That's pretty cool. You know, I love the shot. I mean, look at the, uh, the blue and the clouds, and then the oranges and the yellows in the background for the sunset. Awesome. All right. Just an awesome picture. What's our next car? Whoa. Our next car is a 2018 Subaru WRX. 
Um, the owner is at Goliath WRX. Um, it is bagged in another Washington car. That uh, does not even look like a Subaru. Yeah, I, look lo like a Subaru. I love purple cars. I really do. I've got, uh, and matte purple is just, it's very regal. I mean, if it were my car, I'd put gold wheels on it. But I think it, it accomplishes the look. Oh, and stock trim. I mean, these things put out like 268 horsepower. Yeah. It's still and pretty which analog, is right? A lot more than a 1960 Ferrari V12. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, this is a car owned by Nene, and of course we like uh, local cars. We got a very big Subaru scene uh, up in the Northwest, so kind of spoke to us. And just so everybody's aware, yeah, we, uh, we kind of looked at over you know 100 different submissions for this. We narrowed it down to 30. And we got a group of five people in the room spanning some ages and uh, preferences relative to imports, domestics, trucks, motorcycles, what have you. Uh, and if the photo jumps, the story jumps, guess what? You're probably going to get talked about. I know. That is a really hard choice here. Yeah. I mean, I like anything that rolls on rubber. So, Nene, you're going to get a t-shirt as well. So, uh, thank you for your submission. All right, what's our next car? Uh, I just want to say Camaro Time pointed out that it has a big old wang as well, and I didn't even see the wing in the picture. Thomas. Big old wang. <laughs> you can see it. It's uh, got a little green on it. All right, so our next car is a Chevrolet. Sorry, Chevrolet. 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 Oh, no. Good morning. <laughs> who's, Chevrolet who's, S10 Mini Truck. Uh, the owner is at Mini Truck Ryan. Mini Truck and Ryan. Autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put in a Nickelback joke. That is excellent. That literally made the entire room laugh. So, <laughs> mini truck Ryan, you, you got us good with that one. That's pretty classic. And not only that, uh, I'm not sure if you knew this, but the S10 was the first small truck made in the U.S. All wow. the rest were, uh, you know, uh, imports at the time. I mean, this and is the reason why I'm looking over here is because my son's over here. And yeah, he's definitely he's over here. put some time. I, I think uh, what I like the most is it's uh, a consistent theme. Like the, everything has been touched. Um, Check out the NASCAR wheels. Yeah. That yeah. is just awesome. Simple, aggressive wheels. I mean, it, it's I like definitely, the exhaust it's definitely got a lot of NASCAR uh, kind of style going on, right? Is that a side exit exhaust I'm seeing? It is. And look at the uh, little fixed flap little. on the back. Blowing a little smoke out the side, which so is again, you're, you're going to see us run the gamut here, folks, because we aren't, we got, we don't discriminate. I mean, it rolls no. on rubber, right? That's right. And even so, we found stuff that doesn't roll on rubber. But I just, I, I love old trucks with NASCAR wheels for some reason. There's and plenty this, of just, them in America. Just, I don't know. I'm going to be buying every single one of these cars. I have a few by the end of today. All right, just Mini Truck and Ryan, you can email Richard <laughs> Grio. You know where that our business car, is located. I have a car problem. I've got coronavirus going on today. Oh, man. That Actually, one came out early. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, so uh, me, Chuck Ryan, next? you're going to win a cabin and gasoline shirt as well. Thank you for participating. Uh, again, you definitely made the entire room crack up. And uh, room, I mean video conference when we were sharing all these pictures. So uh, that, that one was great. Uh, yeah, I think we need to hear you sing again. I'm not going to sing again. Oh, come on. Once. Uh, uh, here's the photo. Right it's now. in the internet. Right. It's on the internet forever. All right. OK, Stevie, what what's next? Right? All right, so our next car is a 1965 Ford F100 submitted by Alyssa Breyer. Uh, what makes it special to her is that it was her first car. She bought it at 15, and she's done all the work on it herself with the help of her dad and grandpa. It was her daily driver through high school, and she got endless compliments on it from teachers as well as other students. She also joined a car club with it when she was 15, not long after she bought it, and she has met some amazing people along the way. It is easily one of her favorite vehicles I will probably ever own, sorry, she will probably ever own, because it was her first, and it is her pride and joy to own it. Her favorite Griot's Garage product to use on it has to be Best to Show Detailer. She uses it before every show as well as in between washes to keep it clean 24-7. I love old trucks. I mean, it's so simple and pure and 100% clean and obviously uh, pulls on a heartstring with intergenerational projects. I mean, you're, you're a girl in high school driving a truck this badass. 
you might have found it hard to find boyfriends or you maybe had too many suitors because uh, you're scaring them away with, uh, with how gnarly and, and beefy this truck is. So, so I, mean, I wonder if the white below the belt line is, is um, original. I don't know. It's a white swoosh. It's a really nice compliment. It frames the, frames the wheels. And, uh, but yeah, just look. It's all, it's, there's nothing to it. It's just yeah. simple. When I worked on the farm when I was young, my uncle had all F-100s. I don't know what he was doing, or F-150s. And um, his dash was just like his file cabinet, right? He had like all these excess um, you know, receipts, and just dirt, and rake teeth, and tools. I mean, that was, you know, that's how he you know, farm, I guess. Uh, so, I mean, he would look forward to me you know, coming out every year and detailing his truck. And it was just like, I think I found a dead mouse up there once. Like, uh, wait a minute, what is this doing? Anyway. I mean, for a 55-year-old truck, right, if my math is correct, that is looking awesome. And Alyssa, uh, I don't know how old you are now, but uh, any car that you own from a your teenager and you continue to maintain, that's, you know, it's going to be hard to ever part with that. But it looks like you're taking great care of it. Beautiful, beautiful finish. Uh, email us back and we'll get you a t-shirt sent. I just love the fact that, you know, all this passion happened at 15. Yeah. You know? Well, you, yeah, you hope that... And I love parents that just like, yeah, sure, let's get a car when you're 10. You know, let's like, you know, work on it for the next six years. Well, you hope more 15-year-olds have that passion. I know it's alive and well. I know that's the greatest fear of everybody in the car hobby, but uh, we like hearing these type of stories. And, and there's more to come, so... And with uh, gas so cheap, that thing, that's like a, I mean, that's an economy car now, you know? Yeah. I mean, it gets probably eight miles to the gallon, and who cares these days? Uh, it, it's a great-looking truck, Alyssa. Thank you for submitting it. Hi, right, Stevie, what's up? Next, who? we've got a wide-body Hyundai Genesis Coupe, and that was submitted by Antonio Grego. So, stock these things had like 200 and... And uh, 348 horsepower. That thing looks like it's got a little more than that, though. But I love the grill. I think it's a it's a complete awesome. cons a complete execution. That's what spoke to us, right? We get uh, plenty of cars where you, you slam pieces on it and uh, they stay in primer for four months. And uh, not to not to disparage the nature of a progressive project, but when it's complete and it's a consistent concept. Uh, awesome, awesome wheel arches. You know they look like they're meant to be there. So, yeah. No, this is this is something that uh, you know you can just I don't know start with anything, right? Yeah. But he really, really knocked it out of the park, and I love just like the little winglets down below, painted in purple. Yeah, those are some some wide, heavy wheels. I will yeah. say that much. Uh, Very well done. Yeah, lots of, lots of dish. So what does L, LW class mean? I don't know. We're going to have to hear from Low Antonio. Class. Maybe Antonio can uh, Antonio, let, let us know what's going on when he emails to get his shirt sent to He's him. actually yeah. in the chat right now. Oh, oh yeah. Antonio, what does yeah. LW class mean? Yeah, congratulations, Antonio. Thanks for tuning in, and thank you for your submission. All right. Where is Antonio based out of? I don't think we got that information from him. So let's... Uh, Antonio, we love your car. Yeah. So anyway, just keep typing. We'll, we'll keep uh, going on to the next one. You can chime in. Yeah. You know, when you get an answer. OK. Um, the next car is a 1989 Dodge Shelby Dakota. The owner is Darv Robin Enquist. This was originally purchased new by his father-in-law from Tacoma Dodge. Um, him and his wife embarked on a father-daughter restoration project a few years ago before his ultimate passing. Uh, untimely passing, my bad. Uh, the truck is now appropriately named Pop's truck and is my wife's forever bond with her dad, he said. Well, I think this story is awesome. Um, first of all, the truck was bought down the street from us here like, at Rio's Garage. Like literally two blocks away. Yeah, and we've actually bought vehicles from them. We, you know, we, we give them a lot of business. We still consistently, the, you know, we had all of our um, shop trucks are 3,500 dualies, and uh, in fact, you, you bought a car that I won't mention in public from them very recently, but uh, 
Now you, oh, go ahead. I mean, that, that oh, it's a very practical minivan for uh, for your assistant. And uh, no, I, I was, thought you were going to talk about this one over here. Oh, oh, oh! I'm the sorry. Hellcat. Yes, I outed my dad. Uh, yeah. yeah, he purchased a minivan. The uh, Sublime Green. Owns one. I did not purchase a minivan. My dad purchased the minivan. Okay, uh, very practical cars. You know, low point of entry for uh, children. Lots of Cheerios. Did you know you can get that minivan sideways if you get into a corner, hit the parking brake, break the whole thing just skids sideways. Opposite lock, you know, front wheel drive, and now, you know, next thing you know, you're doing a little. Yeah, we're not going to talk about minivans. Let's talk about Darv's uh, so, bitchin' Dodge Selby Dakota that... Uh, so this is one year only. In 1989, that's the only year they made this. And then they stuffed a V8 into it, and the V8 didn't fit, so they had to take the fan off the front of the motor. So it has no fan, except for an electric fan. So that's, I mean, they just totally shoehorned this thing. So, I mean, you know, typical Shelby. I'm not even sure if Shelby had a, had a hand in that, but I'm sure he did. I think he was um, doing a lot of stuff with it. But honestly, I just, we like this story, first of all, because, I mean, the car has pretty much lived its entire life around here. You restored it with, you know, your father who, who's passed away, but you still keep it. Um, looking great in his honor, and I think that, that's pretty cool. It's a unique truck, too. I mean, Check out the seats. The seats say Shelby on it. I think she, uh, he or she was saying um, that they only made like 1,400 of them, too. So to have one in that nice a shape, I, I think that's pretty cool. Well, that, and, uh, that had to be the only one the Dodge dealer got. And they came in red, but I like white. I mean, white with the red interior looks. I like the decals, too. So. Yeah, that's definitely a Griot's garage car. Very cool story, uh, and we, we really liked reading about that. We want, we want more of that stuff from you all. So, uh, you know, it's really easy to pull on, pull on the heartstrings of, of uh, Richard for, in particular, but also myself, uh, just because it's a family affair in all of this, you know. That's a hand crank window. For those of you that were born, you know, in the last 20 years, you probably don't know what that looks like. But that little crank down there actually rolls a window up and down. I remember my dad just going, he'll never buy automatic windows. Of course, you know, so he bought like this BMW from 1984 with hand crank windows. I said, just come on, dad. That went out with high button shoes in the 30s. All right. Well, very cool submission. You can email us uh, to claim your prize. We will be sending you a shirt. You know, I'm sure we'll see you in the, in the Tacoma store when uh, we're able to open it back up. Um, in the meantime, Antonio answered. Uh, it represents his car club, Low Class Militia, and he is based out of Albuquerque, New, York, New Mexico. All right. I've only driven through Albuquerque, but I, I got to imagine it's a pretty nice place to maintain a car. I love Albuquerque. It's so beautiful up there. Yeah, like I said, I've never been there. But thanks, Antonio, and we like, we like having some geographical spread, too. Yeah. All right, what's next, DV? The next car is a 1991 3000 GT VR4 submitted by David Jovanovic. Uh, it has 80,000 original miles on it. So uh, this was like some engineer went through, just like checked every box. Like, let's see, we need active steer, no, um, active aero, four wheel steer, all wheel drive. Uh, let's put a couple of turbos on this. Like they, I mean, this car was a tour de force for its day. Yeah, I actually watched uh, one of the Wheeler dealers recently where they kind of restored all of those fancy gadgets. And it was, they were pretty simple fixes. But even so, it looks like he's owned this probably from new, uh, maybe from new, I don't know. But it looks pretty well maintained. Again, you kind of, I mean, I was born in the 80s, but losing track of the fact that 1991 is a long time ago. <laughs> That's a 30-year-old. I mean, Grills Garage was started in 1990, so we're, we're 29 years away from that car. So it looks awesome. But yeah, I mean, there was there's some crazy stuff going on. And the coolest thing I learned from that Wheeler Dealers episode was the four-wheel steering kind of like in, or disengaged at a certain speed. At a certain speed, yeah. And, uh, and the aero activated at certain speeds. So there was a lot going on. Yeah. Very cool car. So this is just engineers going crazy. Yeah. Probably and everybody's thank goodness. engineering dream. I, I, hope, uh, I, I mean, I want to know what's that. hanging from the, the mirror. Is that a garter belt or what? Uh, what's going on there? The garter belt. Oh. Well, well, where did the garter belt you're come from? Happily married. David, where's the garter belt? Anybody? David? 
All right, that. David. Well, thank you for submitting. <laughs> uh, David, we'll, we need to we'll more part of this story. Uh, <laughs> email us back, and we'll, uh, we'll get a, a T-shirt sent your way. So thanks. Thank you, David. You can't just you know, drop a picture and say, hey, that was 80,000 miles, and not go through the garter belt story. All right. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Um, next is a Camaro SS submitted by Gregory. Man, that looks good. Yeah. So look at this. I think is that is that a normal stance for that thing? No, that's definitely not. This is so I, I have uh, actually interacted with, with this gentleman quite a bit on uh, on Instagram. I think his tag is hostile one le gen six. Um, hangs out with a lot of other uh, gen six Camaros, and obviously the the alpha platform for GM has just gotten better and better. Um, extremely powerful. Just you know, and this is a Badass modern muscle car. So oh, is that that roof? Does it have a little divot in it? Yeah, it looks like. Does it, it go? It also maybe is that standard. He might have carried some of that uh, that black vinyl or mat treatment onto the roof. I can't tell from here, but really cool. I mean, look, you can the the muscle car era is alive and well, and I still think that uh, as classic as the older ones are, these modern cars can break. They can corner and make more horsepower pretty much from a, you know, the uh, V6 versions. Well, the V6s the, are putting out like 300 horsepower. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like turbo, I, I probably shouldn't say it when a Camaro's on the screen, but there's those you know, turbo four Mustangs that are cranking up nearly four, 300 horsepower as well. But we're focused on Camaros. But I, I mean, like yellow is. Camaros, right? I have a 71 yellow Camaro that I've owned since I was 15. Uh, yeah, you got the right color combination. <laughs> Gregory did uh, include a little more information. He said it makes 900 rear, rear wheel horsepower. What was that? Uh, 900? 900. A little Holy over. Holy baloney. Yep. Uh, it's oh. a 2017 1 LE, and he thinks the coolest feature is that it's the only sixth gen Camaro with a Vortec V7 YSI, along with that car is one of 44 in that color. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Hey, yeah. So. 900 horsepower. But why only Wheel have 900 horsepower? I mean, why didn't that's that's why didn't Gregory go for 1,200 horsepower? Well, he's he's if it's 900 wheel, he's definitely got a thousand at the crank. No, no question. That is a hot. Oh, that's up insane. Camaro. Yeah. Okay, so he's got something hanging from his mirror. So every okay, so this is the new rule. If you have something hanging from your mirror, you have to tell us what the hell it is. All right. That looks like a piece of I don't know, like. Yesterday's donut or something. All right, you heard the boss. You better weigh in. Okay. All right, what's next, Evie? Our next car is an employee car. Uh, this was submitted by Jeff Brown, who's part of our product development team. It is a Volkswagen Golf MK 7.5 GTI. Um, he's been obsessed with Volkswagen since he worked at a Volkswagen dealership as a detailer back in 92. This car features a wide range of performance upgrades from our technical partner APR. The power comes from an APR stage two system delivering 337 horsepower and a 371 foot pounds of torque. Um, the car rides low on APR spring and Coney shocks held to the ground with massive APR sway bars and Toyo tires. The pops and bangs emitted from the exhaust put a smile on his face every time. I had the pleasure to ride in this car with Jeffrey and it pops and bangs like popcorn in the microwave. I mean, it is <laughs> wild. Uh, so obviously Jeff, uh, I get to work with Jeff very closely every day. He is uh, Volkswagen crazy. This is the car he drives every day. He's got two other GTIs, a Mark I and a Mark II that are in various states of restoration, so get back to work, Jeff, uh, on those things, but. The Mark I GTI is what I like. Yeah, you know, so I, I went out and uh, I was in Minnesota last year for the Back to the 50s. I got, Jeff picked me up from the airport in this car, and uh, as he's driving me you know, out of the airport, he says, my wife doesn't like this car because it reminds her of, or she thinks that I'm still in high school and so they've been dating since they were in high school. That's not a bad thing. It's kind of like you've never changed. It's a, right? it's, I mean, that's part of cars, right? You've got that nostalgia. No, but that's but, part of marriage, too. I mean, the guy thinks, like, a woman's never going to change, right? And then the girl thinks, um, 
hey, I think I can change this guy. And then all of a sudden, you're in your 40s and you buy a car that yeah. you drove in high school. And right. And then, she, and then it's like 20 years of training down the drain <laughs> when you go and buy, the, buy your high school car again. No, but Jeff, the smiles on uh, Jeff's face while he's driving this car are indicative of a, an extremely passionate person, which obviously we know about Jeff. Um, but the other cool thing is APR and Dynan are our technical partners, and we did, uh, they did this project together to kind of feature and, and kind of uh, tune this GTI up. So it is rigid, it's fast as all get out, um, and it makes a lot of noise. So Jeffrey, uh, we're thinking about you, and Beth, and hope you guys are doing well. Um, thank you for submitting your car. It's probably snowing up there right now. It's probably snowing. Yeah. Uh, when are you going to take the rear door out and make it like a two-door, though, Jeff? That's kind of like you know, the next, next mod. Yeah, unfortunately, four doors, four-door hatchbacks, you know, you just got to clean two more door seams. That's, that's what drives me nuts about the four doors is you got to open those doors up and chase all the water out when you're washing it. But, you know, he could put, like, gold wing doors on the back. So. He takes pleasure in doing that. We know that. So Okay. All right, Jeffrey, thank you so much. Um, you're not getting a shirt because you already have all the Grails Garage Apparel, but uh, we thought it was pretty cool that some of our employees were going to participate in this as well. All right, so our next car is a 2003 Mustang Mach 1 submitted by Joseph Gall. So this is just awesome. I, mean, I, I just love the way they did this car. They, they went back to the Mach 1s of like 1960. That had like the 428 Cobra Jets. And I think they were. I think back then it was rated at like 350 horsepower. Uh, you know, back in '69. But that was, that was just like ah. that was just a rating. Yeah, that was, that <laughs> just was, more of a guideline. You never knew what they were actually putting out. They, you know, they rate the horsepower at like you know 2,000 RPMs away from red lines. Well, the insurance companies were you know catching on to that. They were going, you know, there's way too many people destroying these cars. Probably have more like 450 horsepower. But. No, I liked uh, Joseph's garage and yeah, uh, just you know a total dedication to a theme, organized cabinets, well lit. I mean, check all the boxes, right? And of course a red and black Mustang. I mean, perfect, perfect theme. Um, yeah, but I mean, look at the outside. He's got he's got uh, you know license plates around there. He's got a really cool sign. Joe's Garage, Mopar, what's the other one? Mopar, you better take that down if you have a Ford. I don't think that's Mopar, maybe it is. No, I think it says Mopar. Well, Joseph, anyway. again, we'd love to talk more about your car, so uh, send us a little bit more information when we uh, get your, your address to send you your T-shirt. Um, it seems like we're gonna be sending you a red one, so. so one uh, last question for Joseph. You know, was that a shaker hood back then as well? I think it's, it, like actually cut out of the hood, I don't think it actually shakes, unless he's done something to that. I, you know, when I was, I, I didn't get a chance to read this. I didn't know if it was the 32 valve or a 16 valve either. But I know the Cobras uh, of this era had uh, 32 valves. So this particular thing was rated at like 305 horsepower, so it probably had the four valve. Yeah. So but. awesome, awesome garage. We love seeing, as you see some more of these pictures, you'll see people's shops as well. Obviously, you're, you're speaking to the right people if you want yeah. to show off your shop. I love that as well. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of a garage guy, too. I mean, cars are one thing, but I mean, you've got to work in the garage. Yeah. So. How's the hey. chat going, Stevie? Any crazy people in there? <laughs> um, someone asked if that was a Terminator Mustang. We did okay. have a product question, though. Um, after a full decontamination, can I use premium Carnuba and ceramic three-in-one together? Which should I layer down first? Well, um, as much as uh, well, we can. I can answer that question, and then if you guys have more detailing questions, and we're, we're you seem like uh, or we seem like you're we're ignoring it, we do have our YouTube live this upcoming Thursday that will that is always very detailing focused. So. Um, for this question though, uh, after you've decontaminated your car, you're choosing between protective steps. You're asking about premium Carnuba and ceramic 3-in-1 wax. Now, you can layer those products. Just keep in mind, uh, the base layer is where you're gonna get your durability and your top coat is what 
you're going to see the effect of that. So if you were to put down ceramic 3-in-1 wax first, you would essentially get the durability of that product. Now, my thought is that it isn't necessary to put that carnauba wax on top of it, but if you did, what you're going to see is the hydrophobic effects of wax, which isn't going to be as exaggerated as the ceramic 3-in-1. Now, as that premium carnauba breaks down over time, as it's a little less durable than the ceramic product, you will see the characteristics of that ceramic 3-in-1 wax reflected. So, if you insist upon layering, just keep in mind, the base coat is, is uh, the durability of your finish is going to be reflected by the base coat, and the top coat is where you're going to have that aesthetic effect uh, reflected. Carnauba obviously will create a nice glow, but I think once you get done with the ceramic, you'll wonder why or if you need to do a secondary step. But again, if you've got more detailing questions, tune in on Thursday. Uh, we're going to have our entire product development team on, and we love answering very technical, in-depth detailing questions there. We always do promos and giveaways there as well. But we've got some more cars to show you, so keep the questions coming. Um, we love hearing from you all, but let's show off some more cars. Yeah, and uh, Hostel Ways, which is Gregory, the owner of the Camaro SS that we just showed, said, LOL, that donut was an air freshener. Let me swap it out with a Griot's. <laughs> it was, so it was a donut. That's good eyes. All right, so our next car is Jonas. a Lamborghini Countach 5000 QV submitted by Mike. Um, he is actually a local owner as well. Um, he said that what he would consider the coolest feature of this was during the 15-year production run from 1974 to 1989. Just barely 2,000 examples of the various iterations were built. The 5000 QV variant, which he has, only had 610 examples. Um, and then this car is special to him because like every kid in the 70s and early 80s, he had an Alpine Lamborghini poster hanging on his bedroom wall. Um, he can still remember laying on his bed looking at that poster and thinking, one day I'll own that car. And sure enough, it happened. That's big. Now, well, Mike, if you look at that picture closely, you'll see Mike's car has actually been on a Griot's Garage cover. Um, so we've seen that car quite a bit around here. Yeah, it's way in the back. It's up on the wall there. Yeah. I don't know what, what number of cover car that is, but um, Mike is a good friend of, of Griot's Garage, and, uh, and he, everybody loves a Countach. But, you know, I had that exact poster. You know where that poster was, Dad? It was uh, when we moved into uh, the house I grew up in. I, my room was the attic. And before we renovated that house, they had left a Lamborghini Countach poster and it was that alpine white and it's like all you know like dark and kind of 80s-esque so I know the exact poster that he was referencing. I absolutely love this thing. I mean that just you know the NACA duct on the side I mean that's like eight feet long right so it's scooping in all sorts of air. I don't know where it's going maybe back to the brakes but uh, now look at the uh, just I mean how could you make that car? It's just it, it, yeah, but it defies all logic. And then you just kind of, you know, the doors are what made that car so you could actually get in the car. Otherwise, you're like on your hands and knees, you know, trying to get into the seat. Well, and I've watched it be backed up in this room before. And obviously, the door has to stay open because you can't see out of the back of it. You're looking, you know, out the back of the, the doors in the air. You're piloting one. You're working a stiff Lamborghini clutch on the other. So... All sorts of chaos going on. That's like every other Italian car, though. They don't care about the rear view. You know? It's like, yeah, uh, what's behind me is behind me. Very cool, Mike. Well, thank you for participating. We're going to get you a shirt. Uh, you can't come here in person yet uh, to get one of these shirts where we usually sell them. But well, we can leave it out at the curbside. We'll yeah. just leave this shirt hanging over. Oh, we'll send it right to you. Thanks. So Thank Michael's you. actually in chat, and he said, notice the posters on the wall? Those are the posters he had in his bedroom. My goodness. That's awesome. Uh, you know what? Uh, he even has, like, a little towel dispenser back there. Yeah, he's been a customer for a while. Yeah. All right, Mike, we love you, bud. It's awesome. All right, what do we got next? All right, so our next car is a Chevy Camaro SS submitted by Nelson. Um, he said he wanted to submit some pics of his 1968 Camaro for our virtual caffeine and gasoline. It's a little ironic that this event is happening this particular weekend as Jason and the road team, Jamie, Miranda, Rod, Lucas, and 
the one and only Matt Perry should be in rally this weekend for the six NC North Carolina Nationals good guys uh, show that was to be presented by Grio's Garage. It's extremely disappointing that the event has been postponed, but it also makes me think about the last six years and the last time I sent some pics of the 68 to Grio's Garage for another event. That was the first North Carolina National Good Guys show. I remember getting an email asking for customers to send some pics in for the team to pick from the display cars for to park at the booth. I still have all of the correspondence and email I got from Nick telling me that my car had been picked. Um, I was super excited, and as I was driving to the event that Thursday, I suddenly got scared. This was one of the premier detail supply companies. I started wondering if my car would be good enough to sit there and represent this company. So I parked away from the little rig that was in use at the time and saw the guys putting up this elaborate structure. I said to myself, I'll just drive off. They won't miss me. But I wanted to meet the guys and see what they said. As soon as I walked up, Nick and Jason met me hands out, already recognizing the car and calling me by name. From that point on, the guys and everyone my family has met at Griot's has been like extended family. They welcomed me into the booth and made me feel completely at home and like I was part of the team. After that first weekend, I learned a lot about the products and how some things I was doing right and some new tricks I could add to my detailing bag. Unfortunately, it would be another year before I'd get to see my new friends again, but it was like they had never, or sorry, it was like they had been there the week before. I think I want to adopt this guy. We do. <laughs> I mean, we'd see Nelson and his wife, Wendy, all the time, actually. It's, it, well, not all the time, and unfortunately, we didn't get to go to Raleigh. We, we uh, became the title sponsor of that show, and, and that story is, I mean, when we were scrounging together our events program, he was one of the first people I emailed, and uh, that car's been in our booth every year. And... Uh, you know, our, our, our rig has changed. Obviously, we now have a big semi-truck race trailer, and uh, his wife, Wendy, has pretty much brought us breakfast every day of the show since that first time we met him. Now we have, like, a countertop where, where she sets up this buffet, and it's like, oh, my goodness. Like, it's so over the top. So uh, Wendy and Nelson have come and seen us here in Tacoma. They've come and seen us at SEMA, and uh, we will be back in Raleigh. Uh, to see you guys again, and uh, that Camaro is, the paint is flawless. I mean, it, it, he spends a ton of time, and obviously black cars, you know, we, uh, we like that, but you, you'd like the houndstooth in the interior as well. Well, I love 68s. My dad had a 68, and I painted that thing for my sister because she took it to college. He didn't like the lime green with the black top, so I painted it maroon on the bottom. In my garage, uh, it was lacquer back then, so, you know, the lacquer uh, probably did something to my brain at some point in time. But, Clearly. Um, <laughs> and it, it, anyway, just, there's something about the 68s. Look at the Coke bottle shape, the way the, the car is wasted. Uh, not wasted, wasted, but you can just see how the, how the uh, you know, bottom... I don't know, the door is like comes down and then the rear fender goes up. It's an it's awesome car yeah. owned by awesome people. And uh, Nelson, we really liked rereading your story, uh, even though I'm, I'm very well versed in it. And, uh, Plus, we had a good time at SEMA. Yeah. I mean, he was right down there. I think he's our good luck charm. That's how we uh, came away with, uh, you know, the second prize down there. Yeah. Well, we'll see you guys again very soon, I'm sure. Uh, thank you for submitting, and we will send you some shirts, all right? I think we have your address, but even so. All right, what's next, Stevie? All right, next is another employee vehicle. This is a 1978 Datsun 280Z submitted by Taylor Hughes. Um, it looks like this has an L28 bored out to 3.0 liter, uh, wannabe reps, 15 by 9 front, 15 by 10 rear, um, hand cook, hand cook. Ventus H101, 265 by 50 by 15 front, 275 by 65 by 15 rear. Suspension BC. Um, he said to him the coolest feature of his car would be the bespoke, uh, I can't read, this is too small, sorry, uh, metal fender flares. It took me many months to come up with the design and how I was going to ex execute it. However, in my opinion, I believe it still holds true to the shape of the car, but adding a bit more aggressive look to it too. 
So many people do bolt-on fiberglass and plastic flares, but I really wanted a cleaner look without any bolts or screws visible from the exterior as it would have been from the factory. So this car is so awesome, we had to hire the guy at Griot's Motors. By the way, my other son, Philip, it's his birthday today, and so... Happy just, birthday, Philip. Yeah, happy birthday, pal. And then, uh, so, they're just getting Griot's Motors off the ground. Um, they're going to be buying and selling cars, so any cars you want to sell to Philip, you know, just drop him a note. I think it's uh, Philip uh, P. Grio at griosmotors.com. Yeah, so Taylor, obviously a young guy. I met Taylor uh, last year during our snowpocalypse. Um, the Porsche Club bust like 60 of their national, uh, like, chapter presidents in on like the worst snowstorm in uh, like the Puget Sound in the past 10 years. And Taylor showed up, he was working for the catering company and he just starts, we start chatting about cars and he told me about this project. Like, oh man, yeah, I, but look I at the get flares. this kid in the door. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, look at the flares. I mean, that's, this is so well executed. Normally, uh, you know, you see them all just, you know, cattywampus, but uh, this just has that certain stance. I love the rear. Look at the top picture. Unfortunately, my face is, uh, there it is. Um, look the way that, that sits and the, the uh, Watanabe's on there. He's got some meats on yeah, there. Yeah, just I mean, awesome. 15 by 10s on, uh, on big tires. Yeah. Well, Taylor, again, bitching car. We're glad to have you as part of the team. We've got some yeah. uh, lunatics working for Griot's Garage and Griot's Motors. And uh, If you are a lunatic, come work for Griot's Garage. Yeah, if you love automobiles and Spending time around the cars, we're, we're always uh, looking for more um, people to come work with us. So, all right, let's, uh, so everybody who submitted there got a caffeine and gasoline t-shirt. Um, again, this is a good time to remind you, if you want to participate in the next virtual caffeine and gasoline, be sure to submit uh, photos, stories. Uh, don't make us guess about what year, maker, model your car is. What's your favorite feature, what, what makes it special to you. Um, we and what's love hanging, hearing, what is hanging from? What's hanging from your rear view mirror? mirror? I guess yeah. if, if you don't answer that question. You're not getting on. Yeah, um, and what's your, what's your next project on the car or, or, or detailing chore? And then of course your favorite Griot's Garage product. So um, submit that using the hashtag virtualcng or email us at social at griotsgarage.com. We had so many submissions for this one that we are gonna carry some of them forward to the next one. And the next one, we're gonna have a very special uh, celebrity guest who is going to be picking his own winners in that as well. And he's a, uh, he's a very, very big celebrity. Yeah, and we're really excited to have him on. So uh, be sure to give us as much information as possible, as much photos as possible. Uh, please take your thumbs and fingernails out of the camera lens before you take those pictures. Um, we don't want you doing anything illegal to get a great photo. Just give us some nice context. We love to see your garage. We love to see your, your kids working on it with you or um, husband, wife, however you're, you're working on it. We're, we're excited to see it. So do you know we're already 45 minutes into this thing and we have a ton more cars to do? Oh my goodness. All right. Well, we're, we're, we're going to keep going. Well, we've got our first uh, grand prize category winner. Um, and that is the best not car. Uh, we had a couple submissions, but this one definitely took the cake and uh, it was an arbitrary category we made up because we loved it. So, uh, uh, All yeah. right, so the best not car was submitted by Matt Yarno. It's a Tiger N72 Louderback. I know that I'm butchering that, uh, vintage hydroplane. Uh, I would not want to strap myself into that thing, race across the you know, lake literally being held up by a prop, and then, uh, you know. Look, when we all saw this, we were like, oh man. First of all, Tiger cool. is in everybody's mind view right now with, the, with all the wonderful, uh, wholesome Tiger King documentary. Um, but, man, I mean, just the pipes and how old this thing was with big old V8, just... But this is from the 70s. It's not that old. It well, looks just, like a lot older. I but mean, you're strapping yourself in yeah. to a rocket ship on the water, and the water is never forgiving at speed. So 
We thought it was pretty hardcore. And he has no roll bar. So I'm, I'm guessing, hopefully, he's got an ejector seat. Oh, you're sitting up and out of that. But uh, So for all of our category winners, you're going to be winning a Concour lawn kit. Uh, so Matt, you've got some screws loose. We've got some screws loose. Welcome to the club. And congratulations. So take a look at that Concord lawn kit again, because it is awesome. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be using a lot of these things as you prep your boat, but you probably have a trailer to get that boat to the water and a truck to tow it. Keep those clean. And then of course, you can put some nice uh, spray-on wax and speed shine on the boat before you go haul ass on whatever body of water. Oh, go you're faster. Oh, just go faster. I, I, I don't think that thing needs to go any faster. Yeah. But if he did put, I'd be putting on, you know, ceramic underneath the, the bottom of it. That thing would just haul. We can't speak to that's effectiveness, but uh, you know, if you watch Christmas Family Vacation, uh, yeah. Clark Griswold and his food lubricant or food preservative, yeah, yeah that's, that's it's pretty much work. the effect we're. we're I had someone call me just saying that you know their plane went another five knots faster. Unverified claims here, so uh, let's keep moving. So Matt, awesome, awesome boat. All right, so next, next category is best collection, because we had some of you just submit tons of photos of, of multiple cars, so we had to group them a little bit, too. Yes, first we've got Pete Davidson, who submitted three of his vehicles, a 2012 2SS Camaro, a 2007 Tahoe LT, and a 1993 Z28 Camaro. He said he spent about two hours on his black 2007 Tahoe LT using Griot's products like wheel cleaner and topped it off with spray-on wax as a drying aid and to give it that pop and a little extra protection. He used Best of Show wax on both Camaros during quarantine. Again, I'm a sucker for Camaros. Uh, I have actually kind of come full circle on the Gen 4s. I got to find the right one, uh, but it's got to have T-tops in my mind. I, I need to own a T-top yeah, car. the T-tops would be cool. But we also, I mean, the first photo we got in this email was the Tahoe. And uh, my wife has a black Tahoe, and maintaining that is a pain in the rear. But it looked so clean for, again, 13-year-old car now. Uh, we had to Brand give you some props. So, uh, Pete, you're going to get a, a T-shirt, and I know you participate with us all the time. Thank you for uh, submitting the photos of your cars. And again, we we thought you had a great great collection here. All right, the next collection is. Our next collection was submitted by David Kessel. He submitted a 1965 Corvette Roadster and a 2018 Grand Sport Heritage. So. When uh, we, we read the email from David, he said, this is not your grandpa's Corvette. And uh, I thought that was a pretty, I mean, it just, it just made me laugh. Uh, and, and great colors. If, uh, the, the, we had to crop some of these images to fit them to the space, but the first one is, you know, is in front of this enormous line of fire trucks and uh, you know, just a cool old, you know, Corvette Roadster, and then followed by the, the modern you know, Corvette. Camera. Yeah, Corvette really got the red right on this. I mean, it is just, there's just something, you know, magical about reds can go kind of like a dirty brown, and this is just, this just pops. It's really, really, uh, and our wax on top of a red car is just like the best thing ever. Little plug there for all right, so next collection. Thank you again, David, for submitting. You're going to get a t-shirt, so they'll reach back out to us. Next, we've got another David, David Veals, with his 1969 Z28 Camaro and Brogy Roadster, sorry, yeah, Roadster race car. Okay, so you know, what I want to know is how you thought that thing would be street legal without any turn signals, headlights, huge scoop, pipes coming out the door. Actually, you know what you should have done is start that thing up and blown those cops right to the next county, and then, uh, then you would have, like, you know, got away. But at least you're wearing a full-face helmet, and that's, that's important. It, I don't but see I want to know the story to that. I don't see any handcuffs, so it clearly was a polite, you know, misunderstanding here. Uh, a misunderstanding, just like, uh, hey, you might want to just, you know, drive your V6 car around. Uh, we just, uh, there is a story behind it. We just found it just hilarious. The, the picture says it all. So, 
<laughs> uh, clearly, you're testing the boundaries of what is acceptable wherever you live, and uh, I don't but, know that that's legal. But it's not, it's not one, it's not two. I think I see a third cop car with its lights on way back there. So that's... I bet you it's noise first, because those are headers that aren't going or being filtered through anything uh, from what I can see here. So, yeah. Like uh, I said, David, we hope on. you're out of jail uh, and hope you didn't go to jail. Uh, again, you're in the Screws Loose Club and you're going to get a t-shirt from us. <laughs> Our last collection was submitted by Misfit Toys Car Club. It is a 1997 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX, a 1993 Mazda RX-7 FD single turbo convert conversion, and a 1991 Nissan 300ZX twin turbo. I think that, that uh, twin turbo is probably one of the sexiest cars ever made. Now, one of our friends, uh, Todd, on Everyday Driver, just had one of these cars, and he literally, all he talks about is getting another one, or kind of how revolutionary this car was, you know, at the time for Nissan, and how Nissan needs to reclaim that. Yeah. with a new Z car like it. I know. Um, but, you know, the, the Misfit Toys Car Club submitted a ton of photos of all three of these cars. All three of them are in great shape. They're really cool. Uh, just, a, you know, a good variety. He's not, um, I, I mean, who doesn't like the, the RX-7s? Uh, they're so cool. So we, we just thought, you know what, we love all the photos. We love that all three of these cars look to be well-maintained and in good shape. It looks like the club's having fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely having fun. Hands out the it window. Looks like Hopefully, one's looks, on the wheel. Yeah, their the hands are out of the window. Is that a center seat car? Because they, <laughs> if so, you look like the longest arms I've ever seen. The two orange, and I don't know if the misfits, but that looks like a, a jail outfit with the orange. Oh my uh, gosh! No? Oh, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a know. theme day. But Maybe. either way, it's either awesome. one person in a center mount with very long arms, or two people wearing the same top. <laughs> All right, uh, great collection. Again, we, if you have multiple cars and you want to submit them as a collection, we're going to acknowledge that as well. So don't be shy. Submit as many cars as you want. Uh, we just need photos and all the information. So uh, Misfit Toys Car Club, you're the grand prize winner for best collection. You're going to get a Concours Lawn Kit uh, from us. So thank gonna you so much. They're going to fight over that. What? I said they're going to fight over that. Yeah. They're going to find out how many people are in the club. Maybe you, know, you give out like 150 of them or Looks like he's showing his cars and taking great care of them. So thank you for participating. David like. Beals says, thanks guys, I did get handcuffed. A little more info on my car. Warren Brogy was a famous race car builder in Southern California that pioneered these type of cars for super gas racing. I did get handcuffed. handcuffed. Hey, handcuffed is one thing. You go, in the, you go to jail, it's another, but. Uh, I, I tell you, all he had to do was start up his, that car and blow that boy to the next uh, zip code. Yeah. All right. take advice from Richard Grio. No, do uh, not. It's a great lesson here. Uh, I don't know how I survived, but uh, I did. All right, so the next category is the best photo or video. So we, again, we want to preface this, uh, just given all the restrictions in place right now, understanding that going for a drive is probably, you know, equates to great social distancing. Don't do anything silly or stupid on our behalf to win this competition, okay? If you've got a great photo of your car, it doesn't have to be, you know, parked on the side of a mountain, uh, but we are going to acknowledge some of your photo chops as part of this, for sure. The first one is a 2006 Porsche Cayman S, uh, submitted by PNW987. Check out the beaver in the back. Yeah, I just, we, we, it was yellow. so deliberate, right? There's a, there's a really close yellow here. That's a Kenmore Air de Havilland beaver. Uh, spoke to me, spoke to the whole group when we were looking at it, just good, uh, good consistent execution. Yeah. Clean Cayman, too. And uh, Sam remarked on the, the, he called them crab claw wheels. And uh, I kind of like that design as well. For PNW 987, you're going to win a caffeine gasoline t-shirt for your photo submission. Keep it up, guys. Our next one is a 2015 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack submitted by Joe Gumser. Look at that. Look at the blue on blue. The water's blue. In motion, blue. too. I, I think that's on I-90, right? It looks like 
it's on I-90 and that, that lake kind of clears um, out and you see all the, the logging stumps, right? Is that the spot? I think you're going up to, to uh, Crystal. Either way, cool blue car, great background, in motion, great shot. So Joe, you're going to get a shirt from us. Thank you very much for your submission. That pack's a cool option, by the way. <laughs> Our next one is a 2002 GMC Sonoma ZR2 submitted by Clinton Seidhoff. Now, now look at this. This, is, uh, this just has so much going on in the foreground and the background. I just love the old farm. You know, I'm, a, I'm an old farm guy, as you probably know. And the, the rattier, the better. And that looks like it was built 200 years ago and is still standing. I like the industrial grunge juxtaposed by a clean red truck, a well cared for truck. Uh, you know, Clinton, it's clear you love your truck. It's clean. And, uh, and that's the perfect truck. I mean, it's got a little storage space behind. You know, the yeah, doors are long, so you can see out of it. I like, you know, the brand new trucks where you're. Clinton gave us some information, too, about uh, the modifications he's done to it. But it, overall, it, it just spoke to well maintained. Clean truck, cool, grungy atmosphere. We like that photo a lot. So, Clinton, you're going to get a shirt. Uh, email us, and uh, we'll get your information. In the chat, Dan Erickson said, I'm not sure what I enjoy more, Richard's comments or Nick's reaction to them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, My son and I, we literally banter back and forth all day long. And, I don't know, we've never come to blows, but we just have some just great conversations about nothing. Luckily, at this period of time, we've got our, our big headquarters and there's, uh, you can go to opposite ends of it and pre pretty much like a mile away from each other. So uh, yeah, get, some, get some real social distance there. Definitely been quarantined in my career the last few years, for sure. All right, so our next car is a 1989 RHD Benz 190E, submitted by Raphael H. Um, says he owned the car in England and was imported to New York when he moved. RHD does stand for right-hand drive. Yeah, he pulled it across the and pond. And you bitching 190. I, know. I love it. I so love tell it. us how it's like, you know, scaring people on the other side of the, the road. Every time I'm in a, in a country where, you know, I always fake out the locals for the first couple of days and then, you know, then they calm down. This is good. It's got a great stance to it. I love the wheels. And can't beat a, a very clean basket weave, uh, and just the, the two-tone feel. I mean, it's such a period color. <laughs> like, I'm not sure if that's two-tone. Oh, it almost looks gray. Uh, it looks like I. I mean, th these these cars, right? They had the they had the, they did the top and then only kind for of a like a year or so uh, cladding down below the belt line. So, uh, Raphael, we really loved your car. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but Stevie is standing in front of uh, one of the baddest 190Es on the planet, um, Evo 2, uh, 1991. So uh, we, we definitely like our, our old Benzes, for sure. So uh, give us a shout, Raphael. We'll send a sh uh, shirt your way. Thank you for uh, submitting your photos. Our next is a Chevrolet SS submitted by Will Rogers. So what's not to like? And it's so got the Holden badging on it too. We, I know Will. Will is a really talented uh, local photographer, and uh, he's got a, a brood of children, and he needed kind of a dad car that still was badass. Um, and he got this SS. It's three pedals, so six speed. Yeah. I uh, just got the wheels done, and he's put all the the Holden. Um, Badging and, uh, and front bumper treatment on it. So. What is a brood? I mean, is that like a family of 10? I, I, I like think it's five three. in the trunk? I think it's three. I don't know. I, I, Will, tell us how many kids you have. I've lost count. Yeah, because, you know, I, I mean, it's got a big trunk. You just start, you know, stuffing kids in the back. Well, look, I mean, I just like the justification of I need a car to carry my kids, but it's still got to be badass. And also, it's the last of an era. Right? It it's, is. A, it's a six-speed, yeah. Holden-esque Trans Am, right? They were, these were built in, uh, I mean, they had the GX8 
uh, GTs. Yeah. Um, so your brother's uh, GA GXP. Yeah, the GXP. How? Uh, what year is that? That I, I don't know 08? off the top of my head. This is newer than that for sure. Oh yeah. No, but it was a Pontiac, and Pontiac died in what? 08, 09. So bring back Pontiac. Bring back the Firebird. Bring back the Thunder Chicken. All right, Will, you're gonna, we'll see you soon, I'm sure, but uh, you're going to get a t-shirt in the meantime. Um, the full context of that shot, again, just a real grungy industrial with a, with a clean car. Then the uh, grand prize winner of the best, best uh, photo category is this next photo. And that is a 1959 Austin Healey Bug Eye Sprite submitted by Andy Pomeroy. So we're going to move that picture in picture so you can see the full context, but... Oh, this is this is beautiful. I love the, the gray on gray tone, right? From the asphalt, the guy's hood. And I'm not sure if you know this, but like the whole hood flips forward, so you can just get in there and you know literally stand over the motor and, and uh, work on it. I think. I wonder if it could take a big block if you do the front. Anyway, but look, I mean, it, it's got almost like a Testarossa look. You know, with the grill, with the oh, lights down there. I mean, that's a, that's a little bit of a stretch. I just like the <laughs> photo. Uh, he's got a co-pilot. He's out cruising in the sun. Yeah. Next to a mountain in Washington. Can't that's, really beat that. Yeah, that is Mount Rainier, right? Yeah, it looks like we couldn't figure out what perspective it was from, but yeah. I think it's not. Nice sunny day with a convertible, hard to beat. And obviously Andy saw opportunity to snap a nice photo. So Andy, you're going to get a Concours car kit. Good news is... It's a pretty small bag, so you're going to be able to fit it in whatever trunk uh, that little bug eye sprite has. So, uh, thank you guys, and that is uh, the end of our best photo category. Um, luckily, we've got one more category, a couple more actually. So the picture of the Scat Pack Challenger was uh, shot up by Crystal, headed back from LB. Ah, but it is Crystal. Oh. You know nothing. Okay. Yeah. Just, why don't you just let me do all the talking? All right. All right, so next we're moving into the best story, and our first uh, contestant, I guess, is Matt Hodgman in his 1962 Ford Thunderbird. It was originally his grandmother's car that he rode in as a young child. When he was 14, his grandfather gave it to him as his first car, and it was 100% restored over the period of three years and turned out beautifully. Well, this is one of my favorite Thunderbirds of all time, and I love the way chrome strip starts at the headlight, works its way back, flows into the uh, door uh, latch, right? Yes. And, uh, or the door handle. And so you don't even, so it looks like the whole car was shaved, but actually the door handle is part of that trim. And then on various years they had, you know, the little three uh, you know, fake vents in the, in the rear quarter, sometimes you know, they're pushed farther up. But look at that thing, it is just, and the cockpit, it's like, you know, this is like the end of the jet age. So, you know, rockets, and we were going to the moon, and, you know, the, um, I, guess. I love the interior. I remember when we were, uh, when I was a teenager, we were looking at uh, 62, 63 Thunderbirds to restore, and crawling in one of those, and the back seat is like this, it's almost like a love seat. Uh, don't take that any more than, uh, it just kind of looks like a hear piece of furniture that. stuffed in there, right? Where it's comfortable all yeah. the way around. It's got a wraparound seat. And they carried that into the 65 T-Birds and 67s. Um, so it was quite a, I mean, that back seat is, I don't know. I didn't spend any time in the back seat. It looks yeah. pretty bitching. We're going to move on from this discussion very quickly. Matt, <laughs> thank you for your submission. Uh, follow up with us. We're going to send you a T-shirt. All right. Awesome car. Uh, our next submission is from Kurt. Um, the photo features his daughter, Kimmy. It is his McLaren 600 LT. He said his favorite part is that the handling is sublime. I have had powerful cars before, including Corvettes and AMGs, but the finesse of the 600 LT is unworldly. Um, it's special to him because his daughter, Kimmy, loves going for rides with, with him. Um, she is named after the F1 driver. I'm going to put Kimmy that name. Kimmy Yes. Which um, is bitching. He uses the Griot's duster and detailer to maintain the shine, and the tire dressing is also a must-have to keep it looking good. The McLarens are kind of my thing, right? And this, 
this car, just you know, with the monocell, easy to get in and out of. Um, they just they have you know just a specialness all all to their own. And you guys probably don't know, but uh, you know, Nick here was named after Nicky Lauda, and I always get to call him Nicky, but no one else can call him Nicky. But I call him Nicky. But uh, so I'm just I'm sort of thrilled with you know the whole naming aspect of this. So we met Kurt, and this car has been in our booth before. Kurt, Kurt has a wheel company called Finspeed that has one of the only five axis mills uh, of any of the custom wheel makers. And Kurt, if you're watching, we are gonna eventually make that wheel that we talked about, but both of our projects are in different states. Mine doesn't have axles, so I can't give you backspacing measurements and all those other things. We are gonna make it, uh, but such a clean 600 LT. I love the, I'm pretty sure it's papaya orange that's, that's streaking down all the sides. So, Really true, and then yeah, any any uh, child named after a Formula One driver, like I said, screws like loose you. club. I know you. So, uh, thanks for submitting, Kurt. We're gonna send you and Kimmy some shirts. Way to go, Kimmy! All right, our next is submitted by Kevin Clegg. It is a 1965 Ford Galaxy 500 XL fastback. He said, during this time of quarantine, I have been working extra hours on my pride and joy, a 1965 Ford Galaxy 500 XL fastback. Starting with fine surface prep mitt and speed shine, I went over the entire car glass and all. I followed up with correcting cream using your six inch orbital buffer. And next was a coat of best of show paste wax. Your sales team suggested I leave the product on the paint for some time. I ended up leaving it on for six hours and then gave it a final buff with a soft towel. The result was a next level shine and pop in the paint color that was truly amazing. My youngest daughter pops into the garage from time to time and says she can see herself in the red mirror. I think we're both a little partial to color red. As a family, we have found different, we have each found different ways to deal with the uncertainty and anxiety of the quarantine. For me, it's been treasured time in the garage, perfecting the appearance of the outside, interior, engine bay, wheels, and yes, even the underside of my car. Your garage therapy theme is so true. I also have taken more time lately to enjoy my car going out on drives along back roads with my family. Maybe this is a call to return to a simpler time. I do know this. It's hard to beat the memory building and experience that happens around that happens around of the symphony of a V-tuned V8, um, of a tuned, sorry, V8, windows down, sporting shining paint and a quick shift through the gears. I hope you like this story in the attached pictures. My numbers matching factory big block four speed car is mainly original. And while Ford did not keep accurate production numbers from 1965, it's considered rare. Your products have been everything you promised and my car has never looked better. Well, the thing I love about this, other than the car, yeah, it's got an F, FE big block, so it's a 428. Look at his smile. Look at his daughter's smile. Yeah, it's Back a family seat. car. I mean, that, that, that just, to me, just, just it, it really cements home what cars do for me, what cars do for other people. And, you know, as crazy as things get, and, you know, you don't have to have this, you know, COVID thing going on 24-7 you know, in your life. You can easily go out into the garage, sit in your car, open the door, drive the car, and just... Look at the smile, and this is what this is what life is truly about: is enjoying every part of uh, of this passion. So, you know, my hat's off to you, Kevin. It looks awesome. I actually would like to come over and drive it. <laughs> I love these fastbacks. I mean, and the one thing we had, Kevin gave us a lot of photos, gave us a great story. We really appreciate hearing this. You guys are like saving these stories, send them to us. We, we, this makes us so happy and reaffirms what we do. Like uh, my dad said, this is, uh, I, I've been checking projects off the list and cleaning and doing all sorts of fun stuff, but the underside of this car, we didn't know what we were looking at in the photos, but like the floor pans are sparkling red. I don't know if you put an orbital on them, but they are clean and you did a great job. So Kevin, thank you for submitting. Um, your story to us is excellent one, and uh, we're gonna send you some shirts. Yeah. I love the wheels too. I mean, everything about this car is just so elegant. So that is the end of the jet age as well. I mean, that. Well, that car's big. If you didn't have an orbital, you were hand waxing that thing, you'd be crazy. 
So that's a big, big car. I love the, like, the stick. It's, it looks like it's like three feet long in the picture. I don't think it's that long. But. Kevin, awesome. And I love your smile. Just, you know, keep it up. And I think you, uh, you know, you're definitely, um, you know, having some fun. And that's what we're all about. Oh, is that, is that it? Is that oh, we got a couple more. We do? Yeah. yeah. Major um, we on? So the next is from Alicia Leonard. It's a 1986 GMC truck. She said her dad's 1986 GMC truck was the first vehicle he bought brand new. Her family traveled the U.S. in this truck when he was in the Navy. He sold it to put a down payment on another truck. Several years later, my mom and I were driving through another town and spot a truck just like this one. We checked it out, and it was my dad's truck. My dad bought the truck back, and a few years later, my brother received it as his wedding gift. Awesome. I mean, just to stumble upon the same car. We've, we've had that experience very recently, buying my grandpa's rig back. But, I mean, clearly, uh, Alicia, you've been joining us with some lives, and clearly you're, uh, you're getting the detailing bug, but have... Uh, a passion for cars, but just to just to know that that car has a place in your brain, and you stumbled upon it again and got it back. I mean, that was an awesome story. And it looks black, so you know, I mean, her father obviously you know has the detailing bug too. Oh yeah, no, and Alicia has been uh, she's been all over asking us very technical questions. So I think she's getting uh, getting pretty deep into detailing. So. We're, we're proud to be a part of it and uh, love to hear your story, Alicia. So we're going to send you a shirt as well. So David says that was a garter belt and it is his wife's. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't need to talk about that anymore. <laughs> hey, they're married. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, but I'm not going to ask questions about how it got up there. Ah, yeah, okay, fine. All right. All right, so our next one is a Porsche submitted by Dennis Post. He said, during the quarantine, I have been teaching my son to clean and shine the car with Griot Speed Shine. I love this picture. It reminds me of myself with my four kids all just, you know, I don't even think I've like washed a car in the last 30 years because I just, you know, pointed to stuff. I, I have that exact same look. It's just like, uh, you're not going anywhere until, you know, that, that fender is totally perfect. I just love the, it, it's like a, happy that you're doing this with me but also like you better not miss a spot I'm watching you I'm scrutinizing you. Oh, yeah. it was perfect I, I mean this one just kind of jumped out at us too like kind of thinking the same thing is art is he like teaching him so that he doesn't have to do it or is he like you know it, obviously the, the image can't tell you everything about it no it's awesome it, I'm we just aired joking. on the side of this is a wholesome moment yeah, but of course it is pretty awesome so Dennis you're gonna get a shirt as well thank you for submitting it son is going to grow up to be very, very successful. Yeah. Okay, and the grand prize winner for our best story, I mean, this is hands down the, the best story we received. So. so this was submitted by Paul Florio. It's a 1977 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. He said, just finished detailing my 1977 Coupe de Ville, been in the family since purchased new by my grandfather in 1977. It was passed on to my dad and has now been passed on to me. I put a little flair on it by bagging it. I was brought home from the hospital in it in 1987, and my wife and I plan on welcoming our firstborn, due in August, into the world by bringing he or she, we won't know till that day, home from the hospital in the car as well. He'd say that the coolest feature is having the pleasure of taking this amazing car for a third generation and someday passing it on to his kids. Um, but if, if uh, sorry, in regards to a physical feature, he'd have to say the air ride. When he pulls up to an event, it takes a lot of people by surprise. He said he can pull in with the car at factory height and it looks bone stock, but when he hits the switch and it lays out, it gives the car an entire, entirely different attitude when it's sitting on the floor. A lot of the old timers actually appreciate it. I did it in a way that you can't see any of the air management, and the car comes off as completely stock. I love this. I, oh, yeah. And so just so everybody's clear, that picture on the right, or I don't know what side of the screen you're seeing it on, uh, is his dad holding him after getting back from the hospital. So I mean, just, or as, as a baby, I don't know if it's the exact moment he got back from the hospital. His dad right. looks way too put together to have just gotten back from the hospital. <laughs> Uh, but even so, just the intergenerational, I, I don't know how you can beat that. And just knowing that he's going to continue the tradition so shortly, you know, this August. I mean, 
Paul, as a, as a you know, new father, is, well, I just can't. And, and getting to work with my dad, I know how important these things are. It's, it's awesome. So we love that story. Plus, it's a Coupe de Ville, right? Cadillac Coupe Big, de Ville. Huge. I mean, that door is, you know, eight feet long. The whole car is like 23 or 4 feet long. Yeah, Paul, you better let us know if you have a buffer because... Uh, How's it going to, like, crawl in the back on a two-door caddy and put the child in there in the car seat? Because, I mean, you know, when I brought you home, I brought you home in a Peugeot 505 wagon. And I think we just threw you in the back. There wasn't even a car seat back then. We just, ah, what is this thing? Well, we'll just throw it in the back. And what do you know? I survived, so. I did survive. All right, Paul. Well, great story. Thank you so much for submitting it. All right, that wraps up our best story category, and we're going to move on to best of show. Now, again, if you're just tuning in, we want to see more of your submissions. We're going to do this virtual caffeine and gasoline again. Let us know if you like this, uh, what we can do better. Uh, but if you want to be a part of it, you want a chance to win, us to talk about your car, um, recite your stories, we want to hear from you. So we're going to put up a slide of what we need from you in order for you to make it as easy as possible to get featured. Um, so you can submit your car via Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag virtualcng or email us at social at griotsgarage.com. Be sure to include your name, plenty of photos, good photos if, if possible, uh, your make and model, don't make us guess, and then uh, your favorite features, why it's special to you, any family connections. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your story, and of course, include your favorite Griotts Garage product, what you're, what you're using the most or uh, what you really enjoy. So uh, we, we've, we've had fun, I'm having fun. You guys having fun? Great time. I don't know how much time we've been here, but it seems like we've been it's, here for uh, a We're now in like one hour and 20 minutes. This is like the longest show ever. All right. Well, we have like probably like two people watching right now. I'm sure Four you've got a lot years. to do today. Yeah. Think, so uh, we better be sensitive to that. But let's get going. We've got best in show. Yes. Uh, so this car was submitted by Harry Lynch. It is a 1969 Camaro with an LS3. So RSSS like style. And anything with an LS motor in anything, I'm a big fan of. And this, this thing just looks brutal. Just perfect stance, modern, sporty wheel, LS3, power for days. I didn't, we didn't get to find out what transmission it is, but uh, I think we have kind of discovered we have a bias towards red, red cars. I think that's the most heavily featured color. And that, and that's not on purpose, it's just natural. You're speaking to us, but 69. Hidden headlights, like you said, RSSS, just RSS. super clean, complete. I love it. And then with the LS motor, I mean, yeah. it makes, finally, I mean, you can enjoy the classic looks with a LS motor. And, you know, I mean, it, it's just, you know, connect and cruise now, right? They give you the gas pedal, they give you everything, so. Turn okay. key. Yeah, turn key. So, why not put an LS in anything? Beautiful Camaro, Harry. Uh, get in contact with us. We're going to send you a shirt. Probably a red one, I guess. Red shirt. That'd be appropriate. All right. The next one was submitted by Mark Silver. It is a 1993 Lotus Esprit. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome color. All right. I think everybody in the room was just like, oh, black jaw. James Bond, Bond, Bond. baby. It has so much yellow, it turned like the bush behind it yellow. Yellow with envy. I, I love these Esprits. Uh, like ever since, you know, you saw Roger Moore drift them, drifting them around in, yeah. in the mid 80s in and fact, 70s. And just in fact, we have a Lotus Esprit Series 1 in the barn somewhere. Yeah, you probably shouldn't tell anybody about that. Um, I think, think I would describe the interior smell as cancer causing. So. Uh, and the uh, fuel filter was zip tied up to the C pillar, so that car needs some work. But uh, Mark's man. is in very good shape. Mark's and, uh, looks a lot better. I'd like to have Mark's over mine, I think. Yeah, Mark, you better. If yeah, these things had, um, you know, four cylinder turbos in them that produced like 300 horsepower. And I think they. So we're talking about 1993 now, so way before, you know, everybody's turboing everything. Yeah, and awesome. uh, I, I mean, I just, I love the shape, love, love Lotuses. Yeah. Don't see many of them, so it spoke to, spoke to all of us. Total James Bond. All right, Mark, so get in contact with us. We'll send you a shirt. 
Our next one was submitted by Michael Sadler. It's a 1971 Maverick Grabber 302. Okay, so this, I think just the looks of this thing are just crazy. First of all, it's a cross between a Mustang and a Pinto, I think. It's got the Pinto uh, rear lights, as I recall. The Grabber Blue is amazing. So you're thinking like 1971, you got the Mach 1s, you got the bosses, you got you know, just all this cool stuff running around. And then, so these things had four cylinders in them all day long, and then some guy up in the engineering department goes, God, let me just like throw a V8 in this thing, see what happens. And uh, <laughs> you know, so these Mavericks were, were, you know, I can't believe this thing is even around. It's cool, and I love the matching uh, modern Mustang in the back. It just, uh, you know, he clearly has a thing for Grabber Blue, and uh, this one's, I mean, it's just nice, and, and something you don't see very often, so. No, I, I you know, I'd like to, you know, to know if it you know, had the Pinto gas tank in the back, though. That's I don't what know. I, like. I, I mean, mean, to me, you it, know, because I think, you know, I see a lot of Pinto of this, and I don't know if this was like uh, on the Pinto platform or whatever. But just to stuff a V8 in this thing is just magic. And, uh, I don't know, Free oil embargo, it's, it's, so they're still doing crazy stuff. Yeah, but it's really well proportioned for a you know, small car. So oh. Half Pinto, half Mustang, you get the Maverick. Bitchin, what a cool name, too. Bitchin' car, Michael. Lovely color. Um, send us an email. We're going to get you a T-shirt sent back your way. I don't know if we can find a Grabber Blue one, but it seems like probably should try and find a Grabber Blue T-shirt. And we, you just order one and get a custom made for them. All right, Michael, my dad signed me up for uh, finding you a Grabber Blue shirt. We're going to do what it, best we can. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, and then our, uh, our best of show winner, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty unique as well. But uh, Stevie, I'll let you take it away. All right, so the winner is Rob Beckford. Uh, he submitted his 1990 Volkswagen Corrado G60 with 3,700 original miles. He said, I think what makes this car unique is that Volkswagen incorporated the Porsche 911 wing that automatically raises once you go over 40 miles per hour. Also, everything is original on this car except the wheels, which I still have. This car is special to me due to the fact that it was my late father-in-law's who passed on to me before he lost his battle with lung, ca lung cancer in 2015. He was a V-Dub enthusiast himself and purchased this car brand new off the lot in 1990. He has, sorry, it has every option available. Then he sold, or sorry, I, hi. His plan was to drive it a little here and there and then enjoy it after retirement, but unfortunately he didn't get the chance. This car has never seen rain, so it is not dirty very often. So I often use the best to show detailer and the new ceramic three in one wax as well. All right, so I think everybody in the room wants to buy this car. Yeah, I think that was the consensus. Yeah. Everybody saw it and thought, oh my gosh, a Corrado G60 that hasn't been absolutely whomped on, uh, I want it. But, I mean, what a wonderful story. I think just, you know, you, him taking care of his uh, late father-in-law's car is just, it's awesome. I mean, that's, uh, that's just so much passion. And, um, 3,700 miles, that a, just crazy. So we, uh, Rob, you, uh, you had the, the best of show. Again, you're gonna uh, win show. the Concord bag kit and uh, you've got a quite nice Corrado on your hands. So hopefully you get some time to drive it this summer and uh, spring as the weather cools. And, uh, you've got the products to help you keep it clean. Better take it to a Volkswagen show and show that thing off. You got the bag now, go win some awards with this. Yeah, and then just tell everybody that, you know, it's our stuff on the car, right? Yeah. All right, well, that is all that we've got. Stevie, unless there's anybody else with the, on the chat that needs to hear something from us, but... We do have a, a Chris Jacobs in the chat saying, hey, Nick and Richard, wish I could be there in person. Oh, well, ah. we'll see what we can do about that. But uh, <laughs> in general, I think uh, we had a blast going through y'all's submissions. Um, Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, you have fun, Dad? I had a lot of fun. I absolutely love just talking about cars. And I have a hard time shutting up you know, around people. In fact, you know, when I go to you 
know, dinner parties and stuff, and, and it's really like extremely boring. And there's like one or two guys out there that you know, are you know, looking for that one car guy, and they uh, kind of like they latch onto my leg, and, and you, know, you start shaking them off and stuff. But uh, it's better than talking about, I don't know, artwork. Well, what do you think, Stevie? Did you have a good time? I had a very good time. All right. Well, had a great time. Uh, again, we will be doing this again um, in two weeks. Uh, we're going to amp it up and have even more cars featured next time. Hopefully, we can get through them a little faster. But hey, we had fun. We're talking about the cars, and we enjoy seeing what you guys are sending us. So, um, just a reminder: in order for us to feature your car, you've got to send us all the stuff we need. Um, so, you can submit at social at griotsgarage.com or via social media on uh, Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag virtualcng. Tell us a story. Tell us why your car matters to you. That what, that's what speaks to us. We care about you and your cars. We want uh, to hear what you're doing uh, to take care of your cars and your loved ones uh, during this time. So, so wherever you are uh, in the U.S. or around the, the world, go out and have some fun this weekend. Um, you know, be safe, be healthy, and especially have fun in your garage. So, signing off from all of us. Have fun in your garage, you all. Thank you so much. We're going to leave all that posting information as the last slide as we sign off. But um, thank you so much for your participation. Hope you guys had fun. <laughs>